This is 101 ESPN from Super Bowl 47 in New Orleans. Brought to you by Ryan Kelly, St. Louis's home loan expert, American Standard Heating and Air, and the BMR Commander Go Pack at Supplement Superstores. What a pleasure it is to uh, visit with Emmett Smith, who joins us now and uh, needs no introduction, but we'll do it anyway. The, the all-time leading rusher in the history of the National Football League. And Emmett, I, mean, I, uh, I think when you were on the show with us, uh, my name's Bernie Miklas in St. Louis. Uh, you were on the show one time. You called in, and I told you I'm, I was a member. I'm a member of that voting committee. And I remember when your name came up, we just basically said, Why don't, look, we don't need to talk. Why don't we just go to the bathroom, take a little break? <laughs> so there was nothing. Was there anything to talk about? Was there anything at all to Y'all talk about? Y'all went to the bathroom yeah. when my name yeah. came that, up. Like, that, <laughs> no, man, that was good. That's to your credit. Because <laughs> it's like there's nothing to debate here. Right. So let's, we're just, let's go ahead and make this easy and let's yeah, go to the restroom because yeah, well, we need a break right we, now. We've <laughs> been sitting here arguing about all these wide receivers. and we don't. Here's Emmett Smith. All right, now. Nah. <laughs> It done. Let's go to the bathroom. All right. So, so that was good. How you doing, man? Man, I am doing wonderful. I, I cannot complain. Life is good. Family's doing wonderful down here at another Super Bowl. Getting ready to watch two great football teams go at it. Uh, I, what more can you ask for right now? I, I know you hear this a lot. My wife, who's sitting over there, uh, I, she said, well, who are some of the guests you're going to have this week? And she's a casual sports fan. I mentioned you. I, you know what's coming. Oh, yeah. I love him. I love him. I was rooting for him so much. <laughs> I was so happy he won Dancing with the Stars. So, do you like do you do you enjoy still hearing? I mean, what what kind of guy you you had? You're a Hall of Fame running back, and yet probably many of the women in America know you for being a champion in another line. Well, you know what? Yes, I am very proud of the fact that I was able to transition from a football sport and come into something a little bit more casual, so to speak, in terms of Dancing with the Stars. Uh, but uh, it was just as challenging as anything I've done in football. I mean, it took a, the same kind of work ethic, the same kind of discipline, focus, and all those things, the fundamentals that made me a football player, the football player that I became. I took those traits and put them right into Dancing with the Stars. Now, there's only so much I can do. I'm limited in my capacity and dancing ability. I mean, I can't have the perfect arms like a Jill or someone else. Don't have the body structure of a lean, skinny, um, very small chested, not not long armed kind of a guy. But I did the best I could with hey. what I had to work with, and, and, See, and I'm glad it worked out. You know what? The, all kidding aside, there is a parallel. I mean, you, you come out of Florida. Yeah. You didn't get draft. You, you weren't like a top ten draft pick. People were looking well. I don't know. He might. He can't. Maybe he can't do this. Or we wish he was a little quicker. We wish this. We wish that. And you shut everybody up. And I'm sure some of those competitors on Dancing with the Stars said, "Well, he's a football player, but man, he, you know, but he runs. He ran with power. And I don't. Yeah, I don't. He probably doesn't. He probably doesn't have those light feet and that no, grace. No, you say so you, you. Not my competitors. They were like, man. <laughs> I mean, you could tell when you step on the dance floor. And everybody, all the other competitors are leaning over the balcony to watch you dance. Yeah. Trust me. They're watching for a reason. They know that you're about to bring something. And, they, and, and it's fun for, for them to watch others. That's the way I was. I wanted to watch others to right. see how they did. Right. See what I can learn from them. See if there's something I can pick up. And that's what it was all about. It was freely competition. Uh, your name came up on our show and a lot of shows, I'm sure, after Robert Griffin III and him trying to play Hurt in the playoffs against Seattle. And we all remember uh, my personal favorite game that you ever played was that uh, that postseason game. Uh, uh, the last game of the season. The last game of the season, I'm sorry. With the yeah, with the Giants, where uh, I've never seen a guy in such excruciating pain uh, every time he carried a football. He had a separated shoulder, and the Giants knew it, and everybody knew you run hard, you're a physical back, you gave everything you had, and you, you just said, no, it, it, I can tolerate the pain. It was unbelievable. I don't know how you did it. And I tried to make the distinction. I said, you know, but that's different because people were mentioned. I said, that's different than a man trying to play with his knee torn up. I exactly. Mean, that's way different. And, and I want, so I wondered what your thoughts were on that because uh, we all respect RG3 for wanting to be a warrior, but, but there's, take it away. There's, there's a point in time where you have to be smart about your situation. Um, and that's the same thing for RG3 as well as for the coaching staff for the Washington Redskins. Uh, playing with a with a separated shoulder and, and all those kind of things, that's way different. I need my legs to get away from guys. He need his legs to get away from people. The first time he, he hit the ground and he started grimacing, uh, and I think it was early on in the first quarter, uh, and he got up real slowly, 
and he went back to the huddle. Then the second time he got hit on the sideline, and that's when he got up even slower. That should have told them something, that this guy is really not quite normal right now, and we probably need to bring him off the football field. And so there come a point in time as a player, you got to be smart enough to say, this is not working for me, and, and allow somebody else to come in and, and do their job. And, and, and that's a hard decision to make. What do you think about the trend in the NFL since you retired? I mean, you come from a time where you have a great back, you build around them, you don't worry too much about who you're running, who your backup is. Now a lot of teams go with two backs. Even Baltimore's diversified a little. I mean, they've got this rookie right. Pierce and Ray right. Rice. Right. We saw, saw in St. Louis, I mean, Steven Jackson, uh, who's a great team guy, he didn't complain, but his work rate was cut back. They gave a couple rookies right. more of a role. Right. Jeff Fisher likes doing that. What? What do you think about this movement towards going to utilizing two backs instead of one? Well, it may be necessary. It may be necessary for various reasons, to prolong a guy's career, uh, to also uh, um, allow a difference in terms of style and, and change up in the middle of the game. Uh, for me, I had backups as well. I had Sherman Williams. I had Kervin Richards. I had Lincoln Coleman. I had Tommy A.G. I had uh, Blair... Uh, Thomas um, also has some other guys. Uh, at the end of the day, it all boils down to who is who's the, who the coach is comfortable with, whether or not he can trust you with the football in your hand. And if you're one of those backs that's backing up and you happen to get in there and fumble the football a lot, you won't see the field. Matter of fact, they may put the starter back in and make him play first, second, and third down because they don't trust you with the football. Yeah, what happened to Kervin Richards. Exactly. Hey, what, uh, real quick. Um, uh, who do you like in the game? You got an opinion? Yeah, I, I think the 49ers can, will win the game. I think they will win the game for various reasons. I think they are solid defensively. I think Kaepernick is the major difference. Why? The thing that concerns me the most with the 49ers is the special teams in terms of field goal kicking. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm rooting for the Ravens. I am going to root for the Ravens. I want to see Ray Lewis go out like a champion, like he deserves. Uh, but also I have some uh, – some business partners that live in Baltimore, and one of my business partners live in Philadelphia. The guy in Philadelphia does not have any rings. Baltimore and the Cowboys, we got rings. That's right. And, that, and that's our topic of conversation every Friday when we have our <laughs> conference calls. Well, I, I grew up in Baltimore, so I kind of I kind of like to see the Ravens win, too. Yeah, so. yeah. Hey, it's really good to meet you again or sit down with you again. I was in Dallas. I covered the Cowboys right before you got there at the Dallas Morning News, believe really? it or not. Really? Yeah. Uh, I was covering the team when, when – uh, Jerry bought it and fired Coach Landry and hired Jimmy and drafted Troy. And then later that summer I left. But, I mean, I was a part of it. It was wild, man. So I hope I know what that whole thing's yeah, like. So yeah. really good to see you, man. You too. Thank and, you. And continued success to you. And, again, um, goutsmart.com. Yes. If, if you for, suspect you're suffering from it or you are, for more go there. You'll, you'll yes. learn more. Goutsmart.com. The great, the great Emmett Smith Thank here you. on 101 ESPN. Thank you, sir.